Well, welcome to another episode of The Platform. Super fun to have Sharon Tay on the show. She's an award-winning news anchor and journalist in Los Angeles, and here's her doing her thing. Hello, I'm Sharon Tay. We want to update you on the stories we're working on tonight. This is CBSLA.com's The Rundown. A hiker is in critical condition after being hit by a massive boulder in Malibu. The LAPD says a man is dead after officers opened fire in the locker room of a Hollywood gym. Shots rang out around 9 o'clock this morning at the 24-hour fitness near Sunset and Vine. I can't believe it has been 30 years. Has it been 30 years? Three decades. <laughs> after hitting the danger zone, Tom Cruise is back in San Diego on the the flight line filming a sequel to the 1986 movie Top 30 Gun. 30 years! Fans no, no. got a gl brief glimpse of Tom Cruise on a motorcycle at Naval Base Coronado yesterday. Production crews quickly put up a privacy shade to block the view. Oh. Why? What's the point of that? The actor revealed the first look at the sequel on Twitter back in May. People who live on base are excited Coronado is part of the action. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, it was great to catch up with her. Of course, in LA, uh, she grabbed her iPhone, jumped on Skype, and we filmed this for the platform. It's uh, great to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, the show I do yeah. is all about stories, so I'd love to find out a bit about yours and how you ended up on TV reading the news. Okay. Um, well, I came to the States when I was seven, and when I, when I moved to New York, I used to watch this news anchor on TV. And... And I remember, my, you know, being from an Asian family, it was like about achievement. So it was kind of an automatic role model, you know, sort of like, wow, she's on TV. It's really wild. You know, it's cool. But I never thought of it after that. And then when I went to, to school, to high to boarding school in Massachusetts, um, in the States, I, um, an English teacher told me that I had a really great voice and you should, you should DJ. <laughs> okay. I was like, yeah, whatever. So it was my English teacher. And um, so I really wanted, when I was applying to colleges, I really wanted to, I really wanted to become an international lawyer. Ah. I had no intention of becoming a journalist. Um, so I applied to colleges with, you know, a major in international law and, and a minor in broadcast journalism. And I, journalism was great because I, I, I I wanted to be in it because I love storytelling. I love writing. I like the process of editing. I love the technology. Back then, it was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. So, the, so it was kind of the way we put things together was, you know, three quarter inch tapes. Wow. It's nothing about digital. Nothing digital whatsoever. So, it, but the process of putting something together, a story together, was was really fascinating. I loved it. So I went to Boston University in Boston and studied journalism and minored in international relations instead. Um, but I was really bored in school. Wow. <laughs> so I, um, between classes, I would volunteer at this small little cable company in the college. And um, because I, I went in there and said, teach me how to do this. You know, I want to learn. And at that point, in the States, you're not allowed internships until you're a junior or senior in college, which is your second to second, second to last year of college. So I just said, I'll volunteer. I'll work for free. So that's how I started grassroots, you know, just to teach my, to learn the business. And, and that was really smart because by the time I graduated, I knew how to write, produce, and direct. But I never knew how to become on-camera talent. I, I wasn't, that was something I didn't practice. And, and it's practice, you know? So I, I knew how to write, I knew how to put a story together, I knew how to, you know, edit, and I knew how to put a show together. So all I had to learn was how to be on camera. <laughs> and and I did, and, and I learned quickly, and within a, cu a couple of years, um, I shopped my tape around, like a resume, that, that was, that's our resume, right? A tape of some of the, your pieces that you've put together, and you shop it out, to around the markets around the states and then i got a bite in monterey california on the west coast and with the cbs affiliate and i started my first official job in in, in california wow. that was in monterey which is to the north of us it was in the central coast where pebble beach is and yeah. carmel is that's where i started which was not is was not a bad place is not a bad place to start right. because when you start you normally in somewhere, you know, a rural, you know, 
Idaho or Kentucky or something really, you know, yeah. far away. So I started in Monterey, California, which was really good. And I was fortunate because after two and a half years, um, I got a job in L.A. And when you, in the States, we, we talk market size. There are 200 markets in the entire country. Monterey was 110. So it was smack in the middle. Starting that at that point, that was good. I got a head start. L.A. is number two. <laughs> Where's number one? New York. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. what was it like then when you're like seeing yourself on TV reading, say, the news? I mean, it must oh. when you first start, that must be crazy. Well, at first, you know, it's kind of like an out-of-body experience, but now it's almost like second nature. It's like talking to, it's talking to people. It's just, it's so natural. I don't even think about it anymore, you know? Um... I still like storytelling, but I was a reporter back then. I wasn't anchoring. I didn't really anchor. Um, but then eventually I grew, and, and, and I got an anchor job, and I was doing mornings with um, KTLA in Los Angeles, which is a morning show, and was doing that for 11 years. Wow. And then after that, um, I left KTLA, left Los Angeles to go back to New York, and I was working for MSNBC. And I had my own show there. It was an entertainment show. Failed miserably, but that's okay. It was a chance. But you know what? You have to fall to get up. And, yeah. you know, you sort of put things in perspective. You just say, hey, let's try again. Um, I took a break from the business for a year and a half. I literally was in Europe just partying, just hanging out, because I just needed a break after 16 years of being in the business and just going nonstop. I just needed a break. So went to... Um, just chilled out for a while and then came back into business in 2006 and I worked for CBS ever since and I've been here for about 12 years. I started singing bye bye Miss American Pie drove my Chevy to the well, Welcome back to CBS 2 News this morning. It is 610. The top 10 Republican presidential candidates came out swinging at each other. We're ready for Thursday night football. Oh, yeah. Tonight's game is a matchup of two AFC East teams the Miami Dolphins and the undefeated New England Patriots. Go Patriots! So there's some great films that have been done about people in your profession, you know. I mean, Anchorman was a funny one. But oh, the Anchorman was a funny one. A great <laughs> one was uh, the, the Jake Gyllenhaal film Nightcrawler, where it's yes. sort of like footage to yes. networks. How, how accurate is that as far as, like, you know, finding footage and being first and that kind oh, of thing? Oh, um, Nightcrawler, we were all in. I was in that movie. Wow. Um, and I was... Um, those kind of movies... Uh, they come to us and they sort of say, well, you know, we'd like to recruit you or, or my coworkers and we'd like, we're doing this movie and so forth and so on. Um, the footage they get is, is, is pretty good. You know, they make it look real. Um, the fact that he's, he's that psychopathic <laughs> is creepy, but it's Hollywood. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, are there people in the business that did what, do what he did? in terms of going out in the middle of the night and shooting and everything like that. Yes, there were, there was at a time. Now everyone has a camera, so it doesn't even matter. There was a time what we called the stringers. Right. That um, TV stations and, and news stations would employ to get overnight video or video, because they had, they're the only, only ones that had cameras, right? And they bought these cameras to do that. And they would sell the video to, to stations like us. For example, um, uh, the Rodney King beating was captured on on a stringer's video, right. and um, was sold to the station I was working for at KTLA. Wow! Back, yeah, and that video was only sold for two hundred dollars. Now, now, wow! Yes, so that story became international, yeah. right? Immediately, yeah. so the the stringer only made two hundred dollars on that video. But it was his video. So what I'm saying is that there were there were stringers at the time, and there still are. But because everyone has cameras now, and if something happens, everyone takes out their phone and records it. Back then, it wasn't like that. And yeah. Only specific people had you know video cam recorders, so they they would capture video of a oil tanker spill or a bad accident or something you know breaking news, something happening on the on the scene, and they would sell it to the stations. And Jake Gyllenhaal's character was that, but he was a psychopath. Same time, right? He planted things. He, he started, you know, some of the stories. 
So that's just Hollywoodized. What you about that great film with uh, Angelina Jolie and she's playing the girl that wants to be the reporter uh, in the network? Yes, I saw that one. That was a great. <laughs> that was a great. Um, that was really great. Um, I love that film. Yeah, that was really good. But yeah. she fell in love with the uh, photographer, right? Yeah, she was. She thinks she thinks she's gonna die. Yep, she thinks she's gonna die. That's right. Um, so not real in so many <laughs> aspects. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was fun because. You know, she went out on the scene and, and she got out there, but she would, as a journalist, you know, journalists, we have, we have ethics and codes, just like lawyers do. You know, we, we abide by very strict ethics and codes. Right. So there's certain things like we can't be involved in the rally. <laughs> right. We can observe the rally. We can't be involved in it, standing there with a the picket sign. We can't do that. You know, right. just, just can't. So that's just, it's just having fun. So what's you know, like a, what's a daily like what do you do in a day what's it, it must be pretty busy because right now you're in your work cubicle and you, i think you've already done a show you've got another one to do it must be pretty crazy yeah two is nothing here the station i work for is for cbs and cbs owns here in los angeles owns two stations one is channel nine and one is channel two so i do um i was do, we toggle between channel nine and channel two we do so much program here pro programming here in town we do about, um, at night we do six shows, wow. you know, back to back to back to back. For me as an anchor, I only do two. Most of the anchors only do two. Sometimes, but if, if an anchor is off on another show, I'll have to fill in. or Somebody has to fill in my shoes if, I, if I'm on vacation. So we, we, we stagger, we, we cover each other's shifts, you know. And um, it gets pretty busy. Right now it's really, I, I have... You know, I do a four o'clock show and then I do a nine o'clock show. So I have a nice long dinner break. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. And how often, so, like when you're, so, when you're in front of the camera and you're reading, I guess, a teleprompter with the stories, is that the first time you're seeing a so, story? Oh, re reading it cold? Yeah. We call it in the business reading it cold. Um, reading copy cold. Um, not necessarily. Um, we are equipped with computers our, our our anchor desks so we can go through what's called a rundown a format and we see each story coming up um it depends on if it's breaking news sometimes we don't get a chance to, and we have to read it cold um but generally we try to pre-read everything when if the copy is in if the writers have submitted them and and it's filed then we can we have a chance to read it we also have the power to change things Again, we have to be very careful of that because it has to be accurate. You know, we have to be mindful of accuracy and um, and how we say things too. You know, so we have some certain we have restrictions and we have codes to abide by. There must be some pretty. I mean, I guess in your profession, there'd be some pretty classic blooper tapes. And and uh, <laughs> yes, what's your yeah. what's what's the greatest blooper you've had? Oh my god, it was just recent. That was probably one of the funniest moments in my career. Um, it was maybe a, like a month ago, and there was a typo in the script. Uh -oh. And they're recalling raw chicken. Why? Because they had found pieces of rubber in the chicken. Ew. Well, you can interpret, it was written as, found a rubber in the chicken. <laughs> so... I immediately read it, and as soon as I read it, I knew, and I started laughing, and all my coworkers, like, literally, there was a pause of silence, and then everyone started laughing, oh, no. and I just, I couldn't get through it, I had to have my coworker finish the story for me, because I couldn't get through it, and it literally went, blew up social media, social media was just like, oh my god, that was the funniest thing we'd ever seen, because it was a typo, and I, you know, didn't thing it was just one word yeah. it could have been uh the, the word uh was was missing or pieces <laughs> up was missing it just said you know it was, it was terrible it's humiliating but it was so funny Hey, it must be and you really can't take yourself too seriously. You just have to laugh at those things. Well, I was going to ask that because there's a great footage. There's great footage of you online with your coworker. I guess I'm not sure how long ago it was, but you're turning around on like a screen and you're driving a car. Oh, on the freeway. we're driving. Yes. <laughs> that was when we were working in the mornings. Um, uh, this was several years ago. We were working in the mornings and to keep, to stay awake because it was so early, and to have fun. We would um, the guy, the directors in the booth would put the freeway the freeway video up so we have the big monitor behind us so we just said ah let's play around so we yeah. just turn around we'll, we'll play i'll be texting he'll be driving you know it's just like that kind of thing and we we put it on on youtube
and at the end of it, you seem to be quite enjoying the music. So I'm, I'm guessing you're a big music fan. Yeah, I love music. I <laughs> love music, and I love electronic music. So. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I do. So what's life like in LA for you then? Because it must be pretty crazy. A lot of people see the news pretty much every day. Um, so yes. It must be random um, for you to get not people know who you are and you go out and around. Well, town. yeah, I mean, you try to take it with, in stride because if you, you become too obsessed with it or, or too um, immersed in, in all of the aim, so to speak, um, you lose sight of being grounded. And I think for me, it's really important to be grounded. And it's really important to just stay focused and, and Again, if you think of yourself as someone bigger than you are, <laughs> it just it's just not really attractive. <laughs> right. So you take it, you treat people with kindness, as, as kind as you can be, because some people can say the stupidest thing. <laughs> um, but, um, and you just kind of say, okay, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. They don't know what they're saying. Yeah. So, What about you know, if it's a guy trying to hit on you or something, if he sees you out? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, if he's cute, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, you get my number. <laughs> but, if you, but if not, forget it. No, absolutely right. not. That's funny. Yeah, so, it's a ceremony I will like, fun. A rock used as a doorstop turned out to be worth so much more. A man has been using this as a doorstop for the last 30 years, but now Central Michigan University says Whoa. it's a 22-pound meteorite. And get this, it's now worth an estimated $100,000. Oh, wow. Over it. We were waiting for a SWAT team to be deployed um, well, you know, once to the scene, the, yeah. but, but it looks like they've managed to talk him out of that car on their own. We're talking about LAPD, we're talking about CHP. Um, I don't see a SWAT team there. A woman is recovering in a Hawaii hospital this morning after a tour boat was struck by a lava bomb. In all, 23 people were injured. Experts are saying when lava meets the ocean, burning rocks are formed. Those rocks often shoot into the air. One giant rock broke a woman's leg and shattered her pelvis. A confrontation at a Century City apartment complex could be heading to court. Attorneys for a contractor, Miguel Sanchez, say they will ask police to file charges against this woman who threw a cup of coffee at him. In the video, the woman tells the man they can't come into the garage without permission from the owner. You know the news before everybody else, so it must be like a weird situation because you guys cover like the, every story that you can think of is going to eventually be a news story. So that must be weird yeah. for you to know all that stuff. Well, it used to be weirder back in the day before digital media, before social media. Now, when something happens, boom, it just, it's, they get it before we do sometimes. You all get it before we do right. because of, of the, how, you know, digital technology has, has you know, just literally taken news by the, the you know what and helped to spread it faster than faster than we can. We just get the complete, we have time to research it, to see what's going on, what's really going on, and investigate to make sure it's credible. Again, that that's like a blessing and a curse. Social media could turn, create fake news, yeah. you know, generate fake news. So what you hear is not necessarily for real, unless you, you go to a, a, a credible news organization like CNN or us or, you know, CBS or Network or, you know, we we work with we work with a number of you know we work with a ton of ethics and issues and 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 legal legalities that right. social media does not. Yeah. Okay. So um, another mm -hmm. bit of footage I found of you was online. You're riding a horse and you're talking to some like pretty handsome Spanish dude. Um, oh, it was not. It was Nacho. You know Nacho, the uh, polo player. No. Nacho Figueres from uh, I think he's from Argentina. He plays, he's, plays polo, and he also models for Ralph Lauren polo. He did for a while. <laughs> Since you're here, can I ask for a private lesson? Yep. Just okay. a few tips. We can do that. Here we go. I'm going to toss this over here. If you get good enough, maybe you can play on Saturday. Well, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I've only, I've actually played once, tried to, yeah. and I'm, it wasn't, well, um, it was really tough. I got it. Okay. Yeah. I got it. Wow. Oh. Well done. Thank you. You know, the stirrups are a little long for yeah. me, but, um, okay, yeah. so what do, what's the first thing I need to know? Well, the first thing you need to know is in polo, you have to play polo with your right hand. My right, right? oh, yes. Yeah. 
So you Why is that? So you can only hold the okay. reins with your Macarena. Oh, the, easy. The reason for that is wow, look at those nails. Those, <laughs> my nails. Those nails are not, not polo, are not polo appropriate. No, look they're not appropriate. But I love them. <laughs> You're up there on the horse and, and it yes. seems like you're having a bit of fun. What's like the craziest thing you've done as far as like either outside the studio or... Oh my god, outside the studio, I've done so much. Um, well, the fun things, oh yeah, I skydived. Wow. Um, that was really fun. Um, for fun stories, I skydived. It literally caught me in the air screaming my off. Wow. Um, it was just like, no, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And then... I mean, I've done some hard new stuff, too. You get into pretty gnarly situations, some pretty hairy situations, you know, dangerous situations, but it's all part of what we do. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then life in L.A., have you had any, like, what's what's your favorite Hollywood moment? If you were catching up with friends, either from originally from Singapore or friends you grew up with and you're telling them about great experiences in L.A., what would be, like, one that you think's pretty, have you met, like, your hero or... Like yeah, no, 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 I've met um, what I do for a living. We become, you know, um, acquaintances of celebrities, a lot of the celebrities, you know, I've met George Clooney, I had a chance to sit down with him and have drinks, and then I've had, I met um, Colin Farrell in yoga class, um, and um, you, you just kind of, everyone becomes part, are part of the community, you know, so you're, you're living in this community. Instead of being, it's just so, it's not even shocking anymore, you know, just kind of like, oh, so, so there's so and so, there's so and so. But it must be pretty cool for you because when people Google either you or, you know, hot news readers or anything, you're on those lists. So, so funny. That was when I was so much younger. Oh, I don't know about that. I think it's still on there now. That must be pretty crazy for you. I don't even look at that. <laughs> don't even look at that. Right. It's so funny. I just, you know, as long as the paychecks are coming in and, you know, and, and I'm still doing what I'm doing and happy doing what I'm doing, I'm, I'm happy. That's cool. What I'm do you know happy. about Australia? Not, Have you been out here? Pardon me? Uh, you know what's funny? My father went, are you in Sydney right I'm now? on the Gold Coast. Oh, you are? Uh, my father, because when I was a child in Singapore, we used to go to uh, Australia a lot. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Because my, my father went to University of um, New South Wales. Ah. Oh. And uh, my mother and him honeymooned in, in Australia a lot. So they spent a lot of time, even before having us kids, they used to spend a lot of time in Australia. So I grew up with Australia in my background. However, as an adult, I haven't gone. And I've, I had so many friends go, and they're like, oh, it's fantastic. You need to go back. You need to go visit and so forth. Very cool. Sure. Well, I love asking people about yeah. living the ultimate dream and stuff. So what would, what, what's the ultimate dream for you if you could live it? Oh, the ultimate dream would, uh, let's see, um, live in my beach shack along the Spanish coast and have dinner parties and just enjoy life that way. Very cool. Well, it's and write, and write. You oh, know, really? It's not... What do you love to write about? Um, I think I would love to write um, stories and just, you know, screenplays and, and so forth, eventually screenplays and all of that, be a producer. I'd love to produce a movie. I say that I'd love to, but I mean, it's just a matter of taking that direction. What are Having you, what courage. Why don't you do a movie about a newsreader in LA that's... Because no one's interested in that. Oh my God, <laughs> you're kidding me. No. So, I mean, that's, that's essentially um, my dream is to eventually retire and go live the life I, I, I want to live, you know, and that's just to be, not have to work all the time and just be, you know, enjoying life, traveling, you know, living on the coast of Spain or wherever I am and just retiring. Very cool. Well, you know what? Thank you so much for the quick chat. On <laughs> yeah, Skype. you're welcome. I appreciate it and uh, all the best and everything. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So there you go. Super fun to have her on the show. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on the platform.